So, how does it feel to be Mrs. Hubbard, huh? Jesse, I'm so happy. It scares me. Yeah. Hey. Ain't got to be scared ever again with me around. I know. Was it good to you? Oh, Jesse. It was more beautiful than I ever dreamed. You dreamed about us? Huh? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Being married to you, of being with you always. That's the way it's going to be from now on. I love you, Jesse. I love you too, baby. Last night was so special. Just like you said it would be. For me too. the happiest I've ever been in my whole life, baby. Was I all right for you? Mrs. Hubbard, you were perfect for me. I just wish we could stay here forever. Mm -hmm. Me too. Hello, Jenny. This is Pat Baxter. I'm sorry to disturb you, but may I speak with Angie, please? Uh, could you hold on for just a minute, please? Mama. Mama, this is private. Well, I'm not bothering anybody. I know, but it's, it's something that doesn't concern you. There is nothing that you could say to any one of your friends that you can't say in front of your mama. What do you think? Well, it's a very good interview. Certainly fair to Erica. Tom was fair to Erica. He doesn't have any idea where she might have gone. Nobody does. She seems to have vanished into thin air. Well, she couldn't have gone very far without <laughs> any money. Oh, I wouldn't sell her short, Aunt Phoebe. Erica's extremely resourceful. Oh, but, I mean, she's also very well-known, darling. I mean, with her face on the front page of every newspaper across America, somebody is bound to recognize her. She's managed to stay out of sight so far. Miss Simpson? Miss Simpson? Simpson, I know you're in there. Now either open the door right now or I'm going to call the police. Miss Simpson! Miss Simpson! this time in New York I had a modeling job and it ran late so I just stayed over where at Erica's is there anything wrong with that no I guess not uh, have you had breakfast no I didn't have time I, I got the first train here this morning well, there's Danish and coffee there thanks listen have you talked to the police yet what for Steve told me you were gonna change your statement no, I, I haven't. I, I just came straight over here this morning. Listen, don't you think you'd better get on the stick? Her arraignment is today, and unless you change your story, the police are going to have a dragnet out for her. Well, she's out on bail. 
Yes, but if she doesn't decide to make that bail and misses this arraignment, Palmer Cortland is going to be out $100,000. You mean if they find her, they'll just throw her in jail? Yes, until the trial. Well, Silver, she... that could be months from now. She has to stand trial anyway, whether I change my statement or not. Don't tell me you're deciding to reconsider her again. I don't know, Mark. I, I'm really scared to talk to the police. Look, Silver, unless you go ahead and, and, and change your story, she will go on trial for murder. Now, do you want her to get the electric chair? No, I don't. I just... I don't know. I, I mean, don't you think they're going to think it's foolish if I turn around and say something different right now? No. Look, Tolliver will think that you made an honest mistake. That's all. No, I don't feel right. I, I just feel foolish. Look, if you're nervous about going down there, why don't you... Call, call Tolliver and ask him to come over here. Silver, I will stand by you. I will give you all the moral support you need, all right? Well, I'd better get upstairs and get organized for the big move. Oh, Brooke, I wish you didn't have to leave so soon. Oh, hey, you got me for the rest of the weekend, Phoebe. It's practically over. Oh, darling, are you absolutely certain this is what you want to do? Hey, I'm going to be a first-string reporter on the best paper in Nashville. It's, it's a dream come true. But you'll be so far away from all of us. Oh, I'm going to no. miss you. <laughs> but it's an opportunity. I, I can't pass it up. But, Brooke, what about Tom? Have you just given up all hope about your marriage? Aunt Phoebe, the marriage is over. There hasn't been one in a long time. And why have neither one of you gotten a divorce? There isn't any reason to get a divorce. We can come and go as we like, and, you know, it's fine. As long as neither of us wants to get married again. Why do you have to be so stubborn? I know perfectly well that you both love each other. It's nothing but silly pride that keeps you apart. Tom is delighted to see me go, believe me. That is not true. Well, then why was he so insulting to me last night? He's telling me that I'm going to fall on my face in Nashville just like I did in Atlanta. He cannot wait to see me fail again. Oh, that's just his dumb masculine way of trying to tell you that he doesn't want you to go. Well, you couldn't tell by me. Look, darling, what do you want him to do? Just come begging to you on his knees. It's too late. The marriage is over. I'm going to pack. Might do it. Benjamin, Benjamin, I need you. Uh, could you get into the library right away, please? Yeah, thank you. All right. Now, I can... Yeah, Duchess, what's up? Benjamin, I've got a marvelous idea of how we might be able to get Tom and Brooke back together again. Hey, great, I'm game. Shoot. It came to me a while ago, but I didn't have a chance to tell you because I was all involved in this Furla Grubbs problem, you know. Yeah, well, I've been racking my brain, but I don't think I can come up with anything that she won't see through, you know. Well, yours is. I admit it's a bit risky, but it just might work. Okay, okay, so give. Come on. Well, it's spring, right? So it's perfectly natural that we should open up the cabin, you know, up in Willow Lake. So? So I will invite her up to spend the weekend with me before she leaves for Nashville. I'm with you. Great. How do we get Tom up there? Oh, now that's your part. You have to persuade Tom to go with you on a fishing trip to Willow Lake on the same weekend. Mm. Yeah, that's a possibility. And we have to think of a way, of course, why you and I have to get back to town so we can leave them there alone. That's, I don't know. I, I think they'd see right through that one, you know? Yeah, but it's a plan and it just might work. I just think they'll be up there where it's all, you know, romantic and But the way they've been the... getting along lately, they're going to take one look at each other and the light will just split. All right, all right, I thought of that too. But I just have to take the chance that I can think up something that will, well, just, just get rid of that possibility, that's all. with you. Why didn't you answer the door? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Whalen. I really am, but I was taking a nap. You certainly must have conked out. 
Anyway, I'm here for my rent. Well, I already paid you. You made a partial payment when you took this room. Now I want the balance for the rest of the week. But the week isn't up yet. Miss Simpson, I thought I made it very clear that I want payment in advance. And you promised me the rest was forthcoming. Well, uh, yes, uh, I, I just don't have it yet. Well, then you'll have to leave. But I told you what happened to me. I told you that I was mugged. You have my deepest sympathy. But unfortunately, I can't afford charity cases. No, wait! Uh, they, didn't, they didn't get my suitcase. And I have, I have so many beautiful designer dresses in here. I mean, I have just wonderful dresses. They're worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Please, you can have them. Really, they're one of a kind. You could never afford to buy these yourself. <laughs> they wouldn't fit me. I'm, I'm not your size. Oh, but you can't throw me out, please. I have nowhere to go. I wish I could think of some way to help. Oh, please, please, just have some compassion on me. Oh, but I do. I just can't afford to have you live here rent-free. I have to ask you to leave. We can talk here. Phoebe's upstairs with Brooke. I'm sure you don't want her to hear what we're saying. Can I offer you a drink? At this time in the morning? Oh, I'm so distracted, I don't know if it's day or night. I don't think I slept a wink last night. Oh, poor Lenny. You've really had a rough time, haven't you? Has she left yet? Verla, your daughter? Yeah, she's in Chicago. Oh, thank heaven. It was the most horrendous ordeal of my life. My heart bleeds for you. Myrtle, if I had known about Verla if years ago... If you you would still have denied her. When I was young, I was a mere boy. A mere boy with slippery fingers to pick pockets and snatch purses. Haven't I paid enough for that small transgression? I think it's Verla who's paid the price. Been rejected by her own father. Yes, it was devastating, Myrtle. But if, if Phoebe had known, she would have been terribly hurt. Lenny. You have a wonderful daughter, and it's no thanks to you. Yes, it's true. I have a wonderful daughter, Myrtle. I hope perhaps we can keep in touch. Well, here is a beginning. What? Why, I'm very touched. May I? Yeah, go ahead. And when you're finished, I want a few words with you. Dear Professor, I just wanted you to know that the only reason I kept your secret is because you've got such a sweet, kind-hearted wife and I couldn't bear to see her hurt. So don't you think that I spared you out of any feelings for you because you destroyed whatever affection I may have had. I'm so terribly disappointed in you. I wish I'd never found out you were my father. And don't you think just because I've left Pine Valley that I can't come back and blow the whistle on you? Because I intend to keep a very close eye on you through my dear friend Myrtle. And if I ever hear of you pulling any numbers, I tell you I'll hop a plane back here so fast you won't know what hit you. And I'll let your wife know the whole rotten truth about Lenny Vlasic. Sincerely yours, Verla Grubbs. All set, Penny. She is going to come and spend the weekend with me at Willow Lake. And she didn't suspect anything? Not a thing. You see, it seemed perfectly natural to her since this is our last weekend together. <laughs> Way to go, Duchess. You're pretty good, you know? Oh, now it's your turn. Let's see you talk Tom into that fishing trip. I'll get on it right away. Good luck. <clears throat> Myrtle, what on earth are you doing here? Oh, please, Mrs. Whalen, can't we work something out? Not without cash on the line, Miss Simpson. Well, uh, maybe I could help you. And I could work off my rent that way. I heard you complaining about what a terrible job your cleaning lady's been doing. You'd like to do the cleaning? Oh, I'll do anything, anything to keep a roof over my head. And I'm good at it, Mrs. Whalen. Oh, I really am. I'm not afraid of hard work. Do you know how to make beds, clean a stove, and keep the kitchen spick and span? Oh, yes, I can do all those things. I can even do the laundry and your ironing. 
Really, I can do anything you want me to, just as long as you let me stay. Well, it would be nice to have someone help me keep this place straight. That is about as much use as an idle brew. Then you give me a chance. Please, I'll prove to you that I can get a handle on it. I mean, there is nothing I can't do once I set my mind to it. And you won't be on the phone all the time? No. Making dates and sleeping later in the morning? No, I won't be going out. Really, I just, I, I stay in my room most of the time. I just like to read. And I mean, I hardly even watch TV. All right. We'll give it a try. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Mrs. Whelan, you won't be sorry. Really, I'll have the whole place sparkling. Uh, we'll see. Now, get yourself on down as quickly as you can, and I'll uh, show you the ropes. Okay. Oh, you're an angel. You're really such an angel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Whelan. Oh, thank heavens. Mama, it's Angie, and she's, she's having problems with Jesse. She wants to talk to me about it. Is that how come she had to drag you away from the chateau last night before you could even eat your supper? Yeah, and she's really upset right now. Oh, well, I certainly don't want to sit here and listen to a bunch of idle teenage girl talk. Yeah. Right? Sure, I've been through that with my whole life already. <laughs> I'm going to head off to work then, baby. Okay, now listen. I expect you at the Glam Ramp this afternoon after school. Okay, I'll be there. Mm-hmm. Don't you be late, baby, because we're all booked up. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. I love you. Bye. I'm really sorry, Mrs. Baxter. My mother was just leaving for work. Yeah, well, that, that's okay, Jenny. If I could just talk to Angie for a minute. Um, look, Angie's, Angie's not here. She left for school already because she wanted to go early and get some extra studying in before classes. Oh, for Pete's sake. I was so anxious to talk to her. I've got something really important to tell her. Um, if you want, I can give her a message. I'll be seeing her in school today, so I can just tell her whatever you need to tell her. Oh, that's very sweet of you, sweetheart, but... It's something I'd rather tell her in person. I know, I think I'll go over to school and see if I can catch her between classes. still no word of Erica Kane's whereabouts. Her arraignment is scheduled for today. Should she fail to appear, she will be considered a fugitive from justice and an all-out search will get underway. And now for an on-the-scene report in Pine Valley, we'll go to Maxine White for an update. Maxine. Yes, Bill, I'm here at the home of Erica Kane's mother, Mrs. Charles Tyler, who was the last person to see Erica before she disappeared. Mrs. Tyler, do you think your daughter will show up for her arraignment today? I honestly don't know, Mrs. Ms. White. Uh, I pray that she will. Do you think it would be possible for me to say something to Erica just in case she's listening? Of course. Go right ahead. Erica? Please come home. I know you're not guilty. There's no way you could have committed such an act. And if you just come home, you, you'll be vindicated. Your brother and I will stand behind you. I love you, darling. And I'm so worried about you. Come home, Erica, please. All I want in this world is for you to back, be back here, so we can help you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Tyler. Reporting live from Pine Valley, I'm Maxine White. And now, back to you. It's Jenny. She's the only one who knows we're here. Hello? Angie? Yes? Oh, hi. I was afraid you'd still be there. Why? What's the matter? Your mother just called here looking for you. Oh, no! Look, don't panic. I told her that you had to go to school early to get some studying in or something, but she's on her way over there to see you. Why? What's happened? I don't know. She just said that she had to talk to you about something in person, something really important, and I just 
figured I better call you and warn you. Oh, Jenny, thanks. I, I really appreciate it. All right, well, just hurry up and get to school, Ange. Look, don't worry. I will. Bye. Hey. What was that all about? Look, Jesse, I have to get right to school. My mom's on her way over there to see me. What? What for? I don't know, but she told Jenny that it was important. Oh, baby. There goes the end of our beautiful day together. Oh, Jesse, I'm sorry. I feel awful, but what can I do? You want to tell her about us? Yeah, I think, I think that I should. Want me to go with you? No, I'd rather go by myself, Jesse. Do you mind? No, no, no. You don't think she's going to be mad, do you? No. Huh? No, I don't think so. She knows how much we love each other. Yeah, but I wish I could tell her that myself, you know? You'll have plenty of time to tell her. I just want this to be a kind of mother-daughter talk, you know? Yeah. What will you do? Well, I think I'll uh, go break the news to Nancy. She's going to be just as happy as we are. Jesse, I wish we didn't have to be away from each other. Oh, not half as much as me, baby. Some honeymoon, huh? Hey, so it got cut a little short, huh? Still the best thing that ever happened to me, baby. And I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life. We'll remember it for the rest of our life. Together. Jesse. Finally, what's going on? Why were those doors closed? Uh, Mrs. Wallenford, um... Oh, you see... I, uh... I was feeling a bit chilly. <laughs> you see, my dear, uh, Mrs. Foggett has brought us a message of thanks from Miss Grubbs, thanking us for our gracious hospitality. And she wanted to thank you very much for all your help in trying to find her father. Oh, well, now that was very sweet of her. I'm just so sorry the whole thing ended in such a dreadful disappointment. Well, at least the search is over and she has seen him face to face. I only hope that doesn't color her whole life, that dreadful disillusionment no. about that man. She'll get over it. She's a very brave, strong lady. But she's also a very sensitive woman. Yeah. And I don't think she deserved that kind of heartbreak. Yes, but dear, if the man wants to start his own life afresh, why should his wife have to Even be bothered about his... Even so, life? she could have, he could have acknowledged her, her very own flesh and blood that she was. Well, perhaps he did privately, and maybe they'll keep in touch. Well, it was very kind and generous of her, all the same, to sacrifice herself in deference to Mrs. Vlasic, whoever she is. And I'm sure that Mr. Vlasic appreciates it. Myrtle, dear, I just want you to know that we shall keep in touch with her. In fact, I made it very clear that if she ever needed us in any way, she was not to hesitate to call. She was very grateful for that. And she was so proud of that lovely brooch you gave her. You know, she wore it when she left. Did she? Mm. Oh, I'm so pleased. Do give her our very warmest wishes when you speak with her. I surely will. Mm. And now I guess I'd better go and uh, open the shop. Of course. It was very good of you to come by, Mrs. Fargett. My pleasure, Professor. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Mrs. Warren. Oh, I walk out with you, Myrtle. I was just going to call you anyway. You know that dress that I'm getting off? Oh, Miss Tyler, I felt so sorry for you. As a mother, my heart went out to you. Where did you see me, Mrs. Gardner? Well, see, we have a little tiny television in the back room of my Glamorama, and I just happened to have it on while I was back there unpacking some supplies. I'll tell you, I was so moved, I even started to cry. I hope that Erica saw it and that she'll come home. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion, ma'am, that Erica is right here in Pine Valley. What makes you say that? Well, now, last night I happened to be working late at my Glamorama. See, I like to put all the day's receipts and everything together and take it to the night depository because I don't like to leave gobs of cash lying around on account of the fact that I was robbed one time before. So I was there doing this. Now, as I was putting on my coat ready to leave, I looked out and I saw this woman walking down the mall. 
Now, she was exactly Erica's height and build and everything, and she was acting kind of sneaky and suspicious-like. And uh, did you speak to her? Well, no, I didn't get a chance. I tried to. I chased her all over town, but she went into some alley and gave me the slip. Did you happen to notice what she was wearing? Well, this was the interesting part, see, because she wasn't dressed at all like Erica would have been dressed. As a matter of fact, she was dressed like what I would refer to as a bag lady, but I figured that that was probably just a disguise. I'm... I'm reasonably be sure that Erica's not in Pine Valley. I mean, there are too many people here who know her. Well, I know, but people all over the country know Erica Kane, ma'am. That is the price of fame. But this is the last place she'd want to be right now. I mean, I'm sure she's not here. Much as I'd like to believe you, Mrs. Carter, please, would you excuse me? Sir, certainly. Hello? Oh, Mother. Mother, I just have to talk to you. All My Children will continue in a moment. Air 4 brings the news. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine, Mother. I'm sorry you were so worried. Oh, honey, I've been worried out of my mind. I was so afraid that something terrible had happened to you. No, no, nothing terrible has happened to me, really. I mean, at least not physically. Honey, wh where are you? I, I can't tell you. Erica, please come home. If you come home, everything will work out. Oh, Mother, there's no way I can. I can't face risking an electric chair. But you won't have to. Steve says that he can get you off. How would my sister testifying against me? Look, look, you're not guilty. And, and Silver has agreed to change her story. What? Yes, yes, she went to Mark and she told him that she'd go to Lieutenant Tolliver and, and that she'd, 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 she'd alter her statement. I don't believe it. But it's true, Erica. As soon as she realized that the, the insanity plea wouldn't work, well, she said that she, she, would, she would change her story so that you wouldn't have to face the electric chair. Oh, what, do you think she's doing it today? Uh, it, it's very possible that she's doing it right this minute. So you see, there's every reason for you to come home. There's no way you could be found guilty. I got here as soon as I could, Mr. Dalton. I appreciate that, Mr. Yeah. You know my sister, Silver? Yeah, thank you. What's all this about, Miss Kane? It's about the statement I made to you the night Kate was killed. I want to change it. I, um... I, I was very confused and upset that night, and and I I thought that Erica shot him deliberately. No, you don't. No, I think she shot him accidentally. Well, may I ask what brought you to this totally opposite conclusion, Miss Kane? Well, I, I was very, I was. It happened very fast, and and I was just kind of in shock that that Kent was dead. Silver. Just simply made a mistake, you see, Lieutenant. I'd like to hear it from her, Mr. Dalton, if you don't mind. See, Mark is right. I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion, and she she had that gun, and, and I, I I thought she was threatening Kent's life, but just she was threatening to, to take her own life. Now, it's interesting how your hindsight seems to serve you better than when your memory was fresh from the scene of the shooting. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, Lieutenant, I, I was just confused. Are you still confused, Miss Kane, or is this your final statement? This is my final statement. Are you willing to swear to that under oath in a court of law? Yes. You realize, Miss Kane, that your original statement remains on the record, don't you? And you'll be closely cross-examined as to your complete turnabout. But, but, Lieutenant, I mean, you saw me that night. You saw that I was under tremendous stress. As you will be on the witness stand. Miss Kane, are you willing to perjure yourself to save your sister? No, no, well, I... Isn't that what this is all about? <sighs> Haven't you been prevailed upon by your brother and your sister's attorney and your sister herself for that disappearing act of hers to reverse your story? Anything rather than send your sister to her death? Hey, you're badgering her. I'm just trying to point out to Miss Kane that the truth has a way of coming to the surface, one way or another. She's already told you the truth. Have you, Miss Kane? <laughs> Mark, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I tried to go through. I just can't go through with this. Go through with what? It's just that it's true. They have been pressuring me. Erica came over here, and I, I don't want her to die. I really don't, but I just, I can't do this. Silver. Mark, it's true. What I told him is true. Which version is that, Miss Kane? The first one. And she came over here, and she had that gun, and she said she was going to kill me, but then she went back to the hotel, and she killed Kent. You swear to that? I do, I do, I do, Mark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I saw it. I really saw it. As heaven is my judge, I saw her do that. Well, it's all right, Silver. It's all right. I don't know. Easy. I wish I had it. Don't you understand? I have to live with that the rest of my life. Mother, she killed the only man I ever loved. And there was nothing I could do to help him. There was nothing. I'm sorry.
sorry you ought to be put through this, Miss Kane. I tried. I tried. I really tried. I'll show you right now, Mr. Dalton. Yeah, right. <laughs> You better try to calm her down. Yeah, I'll take care of her. Hi. Hi. I took a chance you'd be in. I'm here, but I'm busy. I'll just be a minute. Okay, but if you don't mind, I'm going to go on packing, because I have a lot to do before I have to be in there, so... You taking McGregor with you? Yes. Look, I owe you an apology. Oh? At least I think I do. I... I think you misunderstood me last night. Oh, really? Why didn't you tell me about it? Look, I didn't mean to imply that, that, that you're an incompetent news writer. It wasn't an implication, Tom. It was a statement. Oh, come on. All I said is that you're doing so well at the bullet and there's no reason to rush off to Nashville. You brought up what happened to me in Atlanta. Not as a put-down. Brooke, nobody believes more in your talent than I do. Ha! You said yourself, I'm your biggest fan. I am. I predict you're going to have overwhelming success in Nashville. Okay. Maybe I did overreact a little. You sure did. Well, why shouldn't I? I did bomb in Atlanta, Tom, and I'm scared to death that it's going to happen in Nashville you're again. You're not going to bomb in Nashville. It's going to be the best thing that's ever happened to them down there. Oh, you don't need to go overboard. No, I'm just saying, you're an excellent writer. I told you that when you first started out. Do you remember that? I remember that. I'm sorry I, I got carried away. I just, I guess I'm just a little... I'm, I'm sensitive, I guess. Creative people are that way. Sometimes. Thank you. So listen, how about that farewell drink? Or better yet, let's make it dinner at any time you wish this weekend at your convenience. I'd really like to, but I've... I've made plans already. The entire weekend? I'm afraid so. Thank you. Anyway. Baby, I have got the best news for you. Mom, I have some good news for you, no, too. No, wait, wait, wait. Listen. There's a very good chance that your father and I will be getting back together again. He called this morning, and we talked, we just, we talked about everything. And he's finally agreed to see a marriage counselor with me. Mom, that is great news. Well, I called you this morning to Jenny's, but she said you'd already left for school. Oh, yeah. I, I had some extra studying that I wanted to do. Yeah, well, I don't want to keep you from it. Oh, no, no, look, I'm so glad that you came over. Mom, this is really great news. But, you know, I hope that you're not doing this just for me. Oh, no, baby, listen. I never thought it was really over between your father and me. I just knew we couldn't go on the way we were, bickering, fighting. You just can't live like that. All on account of Jesse. Well, that was just a part of it. You know that. And now that your father admits that, that there is a problem, he's willing to work on it. It is a big step, all right. Oh, it's a giant step. And he wouldn't even consider outside help before. Is he coming back home to live? Well, not yet. Yeah, I, I don't think we're ready for that yet. I, I'm not laying the blame on your father, not all of it. I mean, I am not perfect. Well, Mom, you know, I, I really hope that this counseling helps. You know... I think it was good that Jesse came over to see your father that day. Why? Mom, that was the reason that Daddy stormed out the way he did. He, he thought that I was still seeing Jesse. Yeah, well, I, I made it very clear to him this morning on the phone that you were telling him the truth. That Jesse came over on his own, and, and that you haven't seen Jesse not once since your father left us. And, uh, and, and if it makes you feel any better, 
Your father admits he was wrong in not believing in you. That's, that's really good, Mom. <laughs> you know, I hate to say this, Angie, but in a way, I'm glad you decided that Jesse wasn't right for you. I mean, it, it, it really hurts me to, to say that I think that is the real reason your father's decided to see a marriage counselor. What do you mean? Well, you know, even though your father realizes that Jesse isn't the real problem or the only problem, he is relieved that you're not seeing him anymore. So, you see, if he and I can, can solve our, our personal problems, then there's a very good chance that we can be a family again. That's great, Mom. That's really great. Well, I guess this is goodbye. I guess so. Unless you can make it tonight. I can't. I'm sorry. I wish you all the best, bro. I wish you the best too, Tom. <sighs> you think you'll miss the hometown? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm certainly going to miss Aunt Phoebe and, and Benny and, you know, Emily Ann. Well, they're going to miss you, that's for sure. Well, who, who has it said life has changed? I don't know, but whoever he is, he was right. Maybe it was a she. <laughs> I guess I'm still a chauvinist, huh? I think you've mellowed a lot. Yeah? I think somebody else said that age brings wisdom. Oh, come on, give me a break. Well, I haven't been exactly standing still myself. I sure wish things had worked out for you at the bulletin. I do, too. But Craig couldn't give me the salary that I'm going to be making in Nashville. It's his loss. His words, exactly. I sure wish things had worked out for you at the bulletin. I do too. But Craig couldn't give me the salary that I'm going to be making in Nashville. It's his loss. His words exactly. He's really going to miss you. I'm going to miss him. Taught me everything I know, you know? Listen, can I help with something? Can I give you a lift to the airport, maybe? Uh, no, that's, uh, it's okay. Uh, Benny's going to drive me to the airport, and Aunt Phoebe's going to go, so... What do you want to do about us? You want to keep things the way they are? Yeah, I think that's okay. As, I mean, unless, of course, you want to get a divorce. No, I... I don't mind going along the way things are. I think it's easier. Uh, you know, especially since neither one of us really has the time to fly somewhere and get a quick divorce. Look, I better get out of your way. Good luck to you. I wish you all good things, Tom. Mind if... But why? Why would Silver change her mind? But Tolliver really leaned on her. He pushed her into admitting that she felt pressured into changing her story. But she agreed to do this voluntarily. I know, that's what Steve told me. But I don't understand. Why did she back down? Oliver accused her of not wanting to be responsible for condemning her own sister to death. You mean Silver believes that Erica deliberately shot Kent Bogart? I'm afraid so. She tried changing her story, but Tolliver wasn't buying it. 
So she reverted to her old statement, that she heard Erica threaten him and that she saw her deliberately shoot him. Well, then who's telling the truth, Silver or Erica? I wish I knew. Well, I don't believe that Erica shot that man. I never will believe it. Nor do I. Maybe it's just as well that she's jumped bail. Mark, I talked to her earlier. You did? She saw the interview on television and she wanted to let me know that she was all right. Where is she? She wouldn't tell me that, but I, I think I... I think I talked her into coming home. What? Yes, I told her that, that Silver had agreed to, to change her story and that she might be, be doing it right at that very moment. Oh, no. So if, if Erica comes home, it's because she thinks she's going to be exonerated. But she's still going to have to stand trial. Yes, but, but for an accidental shooting, not for murder. Do, do you... do you have any idea where she is? No, I don't. Have you told this to Steve? No, I've, I've tried to reach Steve, but... but he didn't leave a forwarding number. He's not there. Mona, you know what this means. Of course I know. When she gets here, she won't find that the charges have been dropped. She'll find the... the police waiting for her. When the red, red robin goes bop, 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 and along. Ta -da Oh, Mrs. Whaler. I just wanted to let you know, I, I won't be staying after all. Won't be staying? No, there's no need for me to now. I don't understand. What happened? Well, I just received the most wonderful news. I'm going home where I belong. Tomorrow, Blanche and Eddie try to transform Grandma from front to femme fatale on Baby Makes Five. Then Baker and Valentine create a fake woman war hero and watch her become a local legend on At Ease. After, a rapist becomes the target of vengeance by the four women he attacked. Victims, the ABC Friday Night Movie, parental discretion advised. Becky makes a startling discovery that could change Bo's life. Watch One Life to Live following an ABC News Brief next. <laughs>